putting up a putting up a, a foot cage, and for that um, the fences are already there in position. But I need some poles to give support and rigidity to the uh, fences of the foot cage. So uh, for putting the poles in the ground because it is wet, I have to give it some protection at least to help it uh, stop from rutting. So I painted it with this. Uh, paint uh, I used it for metals previously now I'm using it on wood it's really good it lasts unlike the other ones which are uh, for shed painting they don't last they're not good I don't know why they sell them it's just environmentally they say well that will be in the ground and they don't wash but uh, those shed paints get washed and uh, they go back actually to environment easily so that's, that's, uh, that's uh, a little bit uh, something which has to be explained yet. Now Why I built a foot cage? Okay, well, when I got this allotment, this was just an exposed area. I noticed that people come to my allotment. It was, of course, nothing here, no tree, nothing. No shed even. Uh, I noticed people just walking from here taking a shortcut all the time and what I was uh, starting to sow my seeds and I noticed cars even are coming here and then I thought okay this is what is going to happen it seems I have to protect uh, from the trespassing so what I did I uh, started to put some uh, poles these are the poles in the soil I painted them and I dug about uh, one foot and I placed them in the soil. Then I added some support for them, like buttress. As you see here, they're a little bit loose now because uh, intruders yet come in here. They want to see the chickens, they bring everyone. And they throw glass and uh, some of them are stupid. One Polish threw actually rat poison here. Uh, very savage behavior. What uh, this uh, foot cage is doing is protecting my trees. And all these trees that you see here are being protected this way. Uh, all the investment that I made in the fruit bushes, like this blueberry, uh, like this apple, uh, like investing in the, some sitting area. This is, uh, uh, I spent lots of money to restore this uh, Edwardian bench. You can find a video in my YouTube channel. I planted some uh, resistant varieties in British climate can give me some peach. Uh, and I built a polytunnel. So all this was uh, just adding to protection for this site. And I didn't build my polytunnel until this fence was built. Then I noticed, okay, people yet can come here and throw things inside. So, as usual, sick people, really, they're mentally ill probably in a way. They throw things here. And uh, I just put a windbreak. That actually makes here warmer slightly two three degrees you can feel it actually when you come inside then okay i was uh, i'm in love with cherries and i planted lots of cherries here as you see then i thought that okay if cherries and things like the, the white currant and uh, all kind of fruits needs protection from the birds birds are a real menace in the britain uh, pigeons, especially wood pigeons. So I put this uh, bird netting over it. And of course, uh, it was not easy. I didn't build it in one go. Uh, I ran out of material. So sometimes you see I build, uh, I use some uh, pieces of the branches of wood <laughs> which were available. I will show you that. This part is made of branches of wood. Since then, of course, I've, because I ran, I ran out of material. So, but I have strengthened it. I have added some poles inside and uh, it's strong now. And just to avoid the people, intruders, nosy people being curious, I just added a line of this also. And uh, as you see, so added another layer of protection is this bush, uh, sage. Uh, some fruit bushes here, I have a tayberry, a blueberry, I have uh, my, some apple, uh, this is the fig, and an avenue of raspberry, raspberry avenue we call it here, 
you see here all of this avenue of raspberry and uh, so I gave it protection uh, during this work I noticed uh, that people come and uh, look at it some friends actually when they saw I've run out of material they told me that where I can get some good uh, fencing and some of them even donated some uh, wood and some building material I use everything I could find and uh, it was not a one day's job it took me probably uh, several months to gradually to build this so as you see it has different structures this is a rusty material that I added later this was the original fencing that I added uh, I have some modern fencing also here fencing material the the workers were working here they saw I'm using the uh, twigs and the branches of the tree just to give a little bit protection to my polytunnel they donated uh, some of this uh, green fencing they, it was broken if they wanted to take it back with them to where they come they were coming from Yorkshire uh, it would have cost them more actually to carry in them because they had bend and they had these misshapes in them like this ones that you see here and uh, it doesn't work for them to actually take it back so they just told me that uh, you can take it if you want and I took it even some pieces of the the same green material I have used it here so then I thought that okay I have this here why not fox proof it so I started to put some slabs the council was digging the ground in the street and uh, they were changing the slabs so I, I ended up with a lot of slabs and my friend here John told me that uh, come here they are putting some slabs up I took those ones and uh, Foxproof all around here Those sides which are in concrete on the roadside. They don't need anything, but this side needed foxproofing So I foxproofed all of this. We see that is covered now in the grass, but they're all practically slabs like this and So I put the chickens here. This became a, a Agroforestry experience at the lower level of it was the chickens then the fruit bushes then the trees and on the top, of course, the uh, bird that was protecting everything from the intruders. Protect the chickens also I invented uh, a way. Uh, my friend also contributed to this. He was he is very knowledgeable. And uh, mechanically, both of us. <laughs> uh, so we use this uh, heavy weight, which is from the one of the old uh, watches. Tower watches. That is a weight for the... Uh, adjusting the time uh, so we I use this to operate the door automatically closes behind and after us so practically the uh, the door hopefully will not keep uh, open when we go move in and out so what happens was that this fruit cage gradually changed to a agroforester experience a lower level chickens as you see there they are uh, living then comes the fruit bushes like this red current here which you see beside the sylvie then comes at the higher level uh, the nest the chicken coops which we have here three of them one two and uh, three this is the smallest addition and then comes the trees and of course the polytunnel it is a, has a different function and for a sitting area I use some of those slabs also here beside the bench so you see all these slabs are put here laid here so we can sit actually we have a hard surface free of mud hopefully in the summer and we can sit on this uh, Edwardian bench I have another one somewhere else and now in the latest stage of this uh, because we had a tayberry here and a blackberry there, another blackberry and uh, one Japanese wineberry there, which is this one. It's practically the wiring of it was separating our allotment, dividing it into two parts. So we, can, we could not move actually between these two from within. We have to go out from the gate, go all the way back and come from that other side, which has a door there. You may not see it from here, it's not easy. Hopefully here you can see. That's the door. So that was something, uh, was a pain. 
So I built this uh, just uh, just before the sunset two days ago. I managed to build this. Uh, it's simple, just two poles, two uh, metal bars with something to join them and keep the distance also safe and yeah, constant. And now the wires which hold the branches of the tayberry and the blackberry, we have by the way to prune them, will be supported to this and we can use this area to walk through to the polytunnel site. The reason I didn't do it before that, because before the fruit cage being built, uh, I started to build the polytunnel part, the fruit cage for the polytunnel, the protection of it, the fencing for it. And I was worried that pe people may just walk all through there, come here to the polytunnel and have access to it. So I didn't change this setting, these wirings and all these uh, poles which were supporting the tayberry. But now we have this uh, protection of a fence and fruit cage, and it's easy now for me to actually walk through here for myself, have a way for myself and uh, for ourselves. So I'm going next to cut these wires and join them here around, wrap them around, and this will be our pathway. Okay, uh, I was counting the number of the trees, fruit trees and uh, fruit bushes that I have here. I don't count raspberries. Raspberries are numerous. Uh, probably about 70 or so. And, uh, and they're increasing all the time. So I just was counting the trees and fruit bushes that I planted since uh, February 2014, and uh, I found that I have about se I have about 70 fruit trees, including grapevines, and uh, near 40 fruit bushes, like blueberry, uh, blackberry, and tayberry white currant, red currant, black currant, and honeysuckle, and uh, gooseberry, did I mention it? Yeah, such things. And uh, in total it is more than 100, probably 110 or 20. I will go one day make a video about just counting all of them. But this then came to my mind. I've seen the websites of some of the and uh, videos of some of the community orchards. It seems the this allotment orchard that I have has the highest number of the fruit trees in the country for an allotment. It's definitely higher than the number of some of the community orchard fruit trees. They have only 100 or so and bushes and uh, yeah I think my allotment uh, potentially can be a record breaker in the in the British Isles for having the highest number of the fruit trees in an allotment and that makes you feel that yeah it's all right it seems my thrive and hunger for food and craving for foods that I have grown myself and uh, led me to some good good things and uh, it is interesting I can now say that I have an orchard in my allotment and that's the vegetable part of it also but this part is only all from there to here is the allotment orchard. And talking with old gardeners, they told me this is the, the, the maximum that you can fit.
it is kind of dwarf and be, be comfortable at the same time, movement and everything be easy. They actually praise this work and I'm really yeah, humbled by that. I feel that, uh, yeah, I have achieved something here it seems. Um, and of course, not all of this part is just orchard. The polytunnel has taken some part of it. It was my original plan to have two rows of the trees and beside the polytunnel. And then this part was my vegetable patch beside all the vegetables that I grew in the other allotment. And now the polytunnel is there anyway. So practically, yeah, near 110. 120 foot trees and bushes in an allotment under a single bird net cover. This bird net goes from here to that end, completely covers the polytunnel. And uh, this is the, the largest allotment fruit cage in the UK, United Kingdom, British Isles. Or probably the Europe. I feel that uh, there is something here that uh, probably I should look into it more deeply. My, my initial desire was to have as much as possible of fruits and vegetables, meaningful, not just sample samples of fruits and vegetables. Now I think that I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I don't have a private orchard. This is a lot of orchard. But by just feeling that I can do this, I invested time and of course money here. I have achieved something that I want. Most people don't do that. Most people see allotment as just uh, somewhere that they just can go and be the minimum input, take the maximum output. It's not my philosophy. If I want to do it, I will do it properly. Thanks God that was it. And uh, now it's taking shape. It's a beautiful day. The moon is in the sky. the biggest single fruit cage private fruit cage in an allotment in the UK or probably in the Europe if I'm wrong please tell me give me the example that is bigger than this 25 meter by 8 meter 8 to 9 meter Thanks, Scott. Okay, the fruit cage is gradually taking shape. The last part, which was protection against the birds, is this bird net. And now it is done. Hopefully, now you see, we can move our hand here. There is plenty of space. For moving, even you can probably on this path you have a little barbecue, and uh, yeah, and the trees are around us, uh, flowers, a bench of course to sit, uh, yeah, taking shape. And uh, bird net was a big job. How I did it was that uh, uh, okay, putting the bird net, this net, this material over the allotment without actually damaging the trees that we are trying to protect from the birds is a big challenge i'm telling you if i knew that this is such a thing i would, I would reconsider the way that I'm, i put this pose but anyway this is done now how i did it using a series of a network of ropes from this pole here to this pole then to the next pole then to next pole then to next pole to this one all these poles were connected with rope in 
in a sequence, not all at the same time. And the trick was that when you have ropes here, you can practically do it single-handedly. One person is enough to do this. That's the way they use when they want to pass a cable over, for example, over a motorway. Electric cable and other things. They use a rope for that purpose. And how it was done, I put it from this side, slide it gradually without damaging or minimal damage to the blossoms on the trees. I was able to pull the uh, net. First this side was tied. Then gradually started on this, then pulled the net all over from there to here. Then I attached uh, some of this side. Then I removed the rope from this pole, attached it to that pole. And uh, in this way, a network of the ropes was made and the thing was pulled over. Unfortunately, as you know, in real life, things don't go the way that they should. So we ran out of a bird net. So I have to use another piece of bird net that I have from that polyton port. Using it here, for using them I use cable tie, but I also twisted them and uh, uh, rolled them. So practically make a seam, a better seam. And then I joined the sides. It took a whole day to do this. Telling is easy, doing it is difficult. And uh, you see, I have to do two stitches here. And then I joined all the sides to the poles. In the meantime, I had to strengthen some of the poles, but all the thing was for a good result. Now you see, my hand can now reach the top of the, uh, bottom of the net. It's high enough, the trees will have uh, enough space. Of course, these are dwarfing varieties. And as you know, dwarfing varieties hopefully will not grow too tall. And birds will not damage the fruit buds. When I say birds, it means large birds like pigeon. Uh, we need the birds like robin and blue tit to come here and uh, other little birds. So that's the reason I will provide some entry for the birds through those little gaps. I will close some of them, I will leave open some of them. I will probably put them in a platform, I build a platform here to put some uh, mealworm and uh, food for the wild birds. Uh, so some seeds and grains. And the trees in this way will be protected from the big disruptive wood pigeons. And these are small trees. They will not give much compared to a bigger tree, which you, if you lose a few to a few birds, that is not a big problem. With the small trees, you have to have all the fruit, all the crop that you can get out of them. So this is Merton Glory Cherry, enjoying the sunshine, beautiful sunshine. Today is here, uh, yeah, 25 degrees. Uh, this is the plum opal. Unfortunately, a few of this was lost to during the transport of the net. We're letting through it, but that will be all right, hopefully. Anyway, let's get the scene. Um, yeah, Doina the Comis brought from the Dudlow plant center, Shropshire, uh, giving blossoms. That's impressive for a first year tree planted. And as you see, they are gradually trying to open. And enough, plenty of uh, normal leaf just to provide with the photosynthesis. And as usual, as you see, the blueberries are covered around them in a, uh, in a circle with some uh, wood chip to kill the weeds. I'm very disappointed with the trees that I got from the Walcott Organic Nursery. They don't show much and practically they should have cut this and provided a bigger tree when they want to send this. But anyway, this is the way it is. Uh, is lagging behind beyond other trees but uh, we will see, because it's a late variety, this is called uh, 
winter king. Uh, winter king is a late variety, so I suppose that it may give also late some fruit from leaves. But I don't see any activity in these stems, so I wonder what's going on. As usual, the trees I bought from the keeper's nursery, the cherries, were good, better than anything else. Uh, as I always say, cherries and plums are good from the... and blueberries from the keeper's nursery. And pears and apples is good to get it from the blackboard nursery. Don't get the blueberries from them. I tried it, they died, they never replaced them. And they were very small indeed. And I don't see much activity on this uh, Avalon Pride peach. It has been the same shape, the, the flowers, the blossoms. But the good news is that this uh, apple variety topaz, which I bought from the keeper's nursery, look at it. Look at the beautiful. These are blossoms. Oh, I learned something new. The blossoms in the topaz apple variety uh, come from buds which are not much different probably from the fruit bud, from the leaf bud. So I learned something new. That was a good specimen anyway. And also the white currants and red currants are bought from the keeper's nursery. Look at them. They're all in fruit. I mean, these are flowers and they will change the fruit, hopefully. And the cherries, again, this is, I think these are from the Walcott Nursery. This is also from Walcott Nursery. They're not bad, cherries of them are not bad. Shropshire damson, or prune, Shropshire prune. Uh, from the Blackburn Nursery. I got a better specimen from somewhere else. Also look at these flowers, and they're beautiful, these tulips. Yeah, and uh, the hyacinth, as usual, doing well. What a glorious day. Do you remember any, any April as hot as this? And of course the Edwardian bench. Sitting on it, enjoying. Hopefully, the fruits of our labor. I just want to show you this uh, pears. And pear is this one. Yeah. So many fruit buds, pear variety concord from Blackboard Nursery. I don't think I've came across any better pear than this. I have other buds. And this is our sunset. Beautiful blossoms. Really impressed with that little concord. Just show what a good variety is concord. This little concord is from the keeper's nursery. First year, just a few leaves. Second year, look at it. It's full of fruit buds. And these are actually now going to be blossoms. And look at the beauty of this blossom. The way it is, and this Victoria plum. This one is from Blackburn Nursery. It didn't turn out very big, and just last year gave three fruits. We didn't, we couldn't taste any of them because they get lost somehow. It was in my pocket, but uh, 
Yeah. Never find it again. Doing work in a lot when you have to do a lot of sitting jobs, so you may fail and just get lost in the soil. Anyway, that's the beautiful day in a lot. Love the day in the lot, man. And I'm now thinking actually probably with this bird net and there'll be more fox proof in here and there. Probably it's not a bad idea to keep some chickens here also. After two days of rain and cloudiness in April, I think 26th of April 2015, this is Sunday, it's about 7 o'clock, it's beautiful. The sun is shining, and look at that beautiful Morello cherry I've planted. It's beautiful, it's fan trained. And the garden looks not bad, not bad. And uh, yeah, the fan trained Morello cherry. This is beautiful. Lower parts of it have the saps and the rising and the foot buds opening and the leaves appearing. The top parts yet have the wait have yet they have yet to wait for the blossoms to open. And uh, yeah, we will have a good good uh, supply of the cherries. I noticed that if you buy your cherries, your trees from a local nursery, which is in this case uh, is a local nursery that we, is a little bit close to us, Row 1 plant center or garden center, uh, you get better deals. I bought this tree for 30 pounds and this tree anywhere else is 42 to 49 pounds and this is brilliant. Just immediately put it in the car, brought it here. I can control it. It's on a cold root stock, so it may grow a little bit tall. But I'm, I'm planning to control it. I don't want to grow beyond the limit that I have put with this bird net. And uh, yeah, things looking not as bad as, as they look in the winter. That's the orchard that it looks now. These two rows were the ones that I planted in 2014. And these three rows, one, two, and the third is there. The trees are very smaller. Uh, I planted in the 2015, so practically two parts and uh, some parts of it are one year ahead so these are these are the ones which are one year ahead this is Merton Glory and uh, thanks God we have now a path here we can stay with a clean foot clean shoes sitting there enjoying on our bench thanks to friends John the Englishman John the Irishman <laughs> and another John another Irishman <laughs> who gave me that other bench, uh, the one that I put at the center here. Just needs a minimal repair. This one needs more repair to an Irishman. And uh, John the Englishman told me that, uh, yeah, the council is removing these slabs, go and take it. If you want, talk with the workers. I talked with the workers and they just, yeah, happily gave it to me because it, it saved them some, some work. They had to carry it and they crush it and so. So, <coughs> what I'm thinking about this bird nest, look at this, I think this is probably one of the biggest <coughs> known commercial uh, bird net covered orchard in the country. In El Allotment probably is the biggest in the UK, is it? And this length of the allotment got, <coughs> thanks to God, is 25 meters. The width is uh, 
about eight to nine meters. <coughs> and uh, yeah, probably that's the biggest space. 225 meters at least, square meters. And uh, yeah, if you wanted to know it in feet, probably is about 1,000 square feet. I don't know, you have to calculate it. <coughs> or more than that, probably. And uh, yeah, three by three, it will be nine, nine times. So, anyway. And uh, yeah, well, now I, I'm thinking to use this actually, this orchard also, for a uh, kind of, if I fox proof it, of course. I use it for putting a little chicken coop there, somewhere behind that bench, on the, uh, between the uh, blackberries and the raspberry. And uh, just use the, as a little summer chicken coop. It's, it's, it's reasonably spaced. The chickens can be free here. There is no vegetables here. They will not be. <coughs> so, God willing, this will be a good place. And look at that topaz apple. It's all in blossom. It's amazing. And look at that red fall stuff. So blossom. And look at this bountiful. And that other one. Uh, um, sunset. And the next one, adjacent to it now at the center, is the is a discovery and that one is center is now here. That is our Concord. And the one at the, behind that, that now what is at the center, these are I think other Morello cherries. I think I got it from uh, Keeper's Nursery. Anyway, I have to look in my notes. Now I'm thinking about, I have some goji berries and probably I will plant them somewhere here. I don't have any more space other than that. Beside these poles, I have two goji berries. One of them here, here probably one of them here. They are kind of climbing. <coughs> kind of climbing. Anyway, I can train them like, to be like that. They're a little bit thorny. At the moment they're in the pots, but uh, I'm thinking what to do with them. Merton Glory Cherry is going really good. And that is my inspiration. Uh, that's what I saw in my neighbor's garden. And I thought, okay, that's a good idea, actually. Low maintenance. And yeah, you can have fruits. And I love fruits. and always grow fruits. But when I saw in the allotment, she has done it. Uh, she's a GP, doctor. English. And uh, yeah. So I just get inspired and done it. For ourselves also. Very good. Uh, if you look there, she has shaped that tree, or is it just accidental? It's like a cross. If you look from the somewhere in the better view, Or is it just a spalier looking because of the weight of the uh, branches gradually looking like a cross? Can be that case. Because look, my spaliers also look like that at the moment. They look like peace symbol, hippies. <laughs> and also this one, bountiful. But probably if they get heavier, they will just go horizontal. That's one of the tricks nurseries do. Nurseries do these kind of things. Train these trees at this at a very little age. And they're really small into the spaliers and they end up fruiting. The tree gets fooled because more horizontal branches means that they, they get full different probably. Uh, they're older than what they are and they bring more fruit and that's the trick they do. It must have something with the hormones in the in the trees. Uh, or the yeah there are, there are there are many theories about it. I just I don't want to talk about it on the side I know exactly what I'm telling. And that is bountiful. I bought bountiful variety of the cooking apple after the Bunty, Bunty's block, the lady in the South Wales, uh, recommended that. I thought, that, okay, I'll give a go for that because it seems like she's happy with that as a cooking apple. And now, it's the second year. We had first year some apples from this and now second year. 
This one is from Blackburn now, so I think. <sighs> Good day. Beautiful sunset. In the biggest bird net of the UK in an allotment. Tell me what you think. Is it true or not? Agroforestry is having uh, um, different layers of the growth, farming and uh, horticulture in the same place. So you may have poultry, fruit bushes, like what we have here, fruit trees. Uh, rotten wood, flowers, all in one place. Uh, already I've told that this allotment probably claimed that is the biggest uh, food cage in the UK or in the Europe. Biggest private allotment food cage anywhere in Europe. And I think I stand by that, but I can also add that this is an agroforestry experiment. It's sustainable. The poultry provides with manure, chicken manure, food, uh, weed control mechanisms, which is free. They graze at a lower level of the uh, ecosystem that is near the ground and where the trees growing upward at the same time we have fruit bushes like this uh, red current and at the same time we have a composting mechanisms Naturally composting happens here, but we have also compost making mechanism in place from the chicken bedding. The system can go on forever. The only thing we have, we, we, we miss here, is a rooster to actually let, let the system continuously be perpetrated. The rooster we had, and we could actually have it here if we wanted, but the problem is that some neighbors don't like it. So we have to be considerate to them. That's the only shortcoming that we have here. That the system uh, needs the input of either fertilized eggs or semen, sperm, from outside source. Genetic material to be added here. So if you have that, that system is uh, completely sustainable. Of course, we have a little input here. We have food, of course. We bring some food here. That's another problem. Yeah, I have to add that. If we could grow our own grains here, that would be perfect. But our experiments in agroforestry so far is working. It can be improved, but it's, but it's working.
ایرانیان متلار این دوم از گیل ایرانی یا کنوس Strawberry grape, a new variety that I'm trying this year. Pear variety Concord. This is the second year and it is given fruit. Last year it gave eight beautiful, delicious, sweet, aromatic fruits. This year it seems it's going to break its own record. This is the plum variety blue tint. In a way, it's similar to the Victoria plum. And it's very vigorous. I bought this tree from the Blackmore Nursery. It's the second year. It has some reasonable amount of fruits. As you can see, I'm looking forward. Last year I did a summer pruning, and the result of it is these fruits and the branches now. I will do another summer pruning, probably in just two weeks, three weeks time. This is Discovery, the apple variety called Discovery. It gives the one of the best early fruits apples that I can recommend. Last year, this one didn't give me any fruit, but the other one gave four fruits. Delicious, beautiful skin, beautiful taste, juicy, and uh, with a tinge of a strawberry taste. Chemistry of the plants are similar, so no surprise, some of them remind us in fragrance and taste another variety of the plants. This is my favorite yellow red cherry. It's called Mertong Glory. It's named after a, a horticultural station of the Royal Horticultural Society. Merton was one of the directors, I think. Anyway, the size of the cherries. Today we had a hailstorm. This is the ice falling from the sky. And the bird net <laughs> took most of the <laughs> pressure from that. We didn't have much damage to the leaf. Even the leaves, I can say, are not damaged at all. That bird net is freaking good. I like what I have done. Look at this size of the cherries is the uh, 19th of the May and look at the size of the cherry. They're really swollen. They're real grown large. And these are the woods that are new now. Next year these ones will give me also some fruit. So I'm really happy it's pushing out the cherry. Really delighted with this Merton Glory. I've ordered another one similar to this. You will see how it will do. This is a plum. The name of the variety is Opal. Again, similar to Victoria plum, which is a famous plum in the England, in the United Kingdom. And as you can see, is already swollen. They are growing big. No damage to the leaf because of the hailstone. And I can say that 
opal, about two to three weeks, ripens earlier than the Victoria. My Victoria at the moment is very small, my Victoria uh, plum. So I'm looking forward to have some of this. I planted more than 120 fruit trees and fruit bushes in this allotment over the past 15 months. The result of this is the orchard that you see with the polytunnel, which was built on the same year. And uh, this is a mini tour of our allotment. This is apple variety called um, Winter King or Winston. It's very aromatic blossom. One of the most aromatic, beside the discovery, this is one of the most aromatic. Probably even more aromatic than the Winston, than the discovery. The smell of it is lovely. And I'm really happy with this tree now. Look, it has given some leaves. I was worried that they're not growing. Even some growth of the branches here. It's going to do well. I may have even some apples. It's a late apple, so it will, it will be ready in late October, November. And it, it keeps up to the next year, 2016. Hopefully we will have some of these fruits this year. If you don't have any, not a big deal. Next year yet, we can have. A little damage to the aphid, due to the aphids here. Okay. But, uh, just superficial. If I try to open it, probably I can. I will do it when my uh, camera is off. The sun is now setting. I was working to preparing another bed. 